What is up, friends and book babes? Welcome to Book Miss Day, whatever it is. Today's video, I decided we should do another 24 hours challenge. I am doing a challenge where I just use my stopwatch. We're not going to be pulling all nighters, hopefully ever again. I want to do Christmas books for 24 hours. Only one book I physically own that's a Christmas book, other than the Christmas Carol. Other than that, I have one other book that I got that I read last year on Kindle Unlimited and I loved so much that I bought the physical copy. So it's time for a reread. We're going to read Scrooge and the Girls Next Door. I hope this reread, um, I'll love it still because honestly, I don't remember much. I just know that it's next door neighbor trope and she's a single mom and I think he's like a professor or something. I don't remember, but yeah, I really want to read this one and see if I still feel the same way I did last year and finally annotate it. But yeah, so this is going to be the first book um, that we start off with. So let's get into it. It's almost been about four hours of reading Christmas books, and I feel like in four hours I would have finished Miss Scrooge and the Girls Next Door or whatever, but I did want something to read on Kindle as well, so I'm also reading Coco Kisses which is also by the same author, but yeah. So I'm reading two books by her at the same time, one on Kindle, one physically. I I think from reading this one physically, I just solidified my opinion on owning physical Christmas books, and that's that I don't like to. <laughs> I don't like owning actual Christmas books. I like just reading them on my Kindle, and probably because they're just so seasonal that I just don't see the point in owning it physically. More power to you if you do, of course, but yeah. Um, after I finish this one, we're just gonna stick to the Kindle. So yeah, in a little bit under four hours, I've gotten to 38% of this one, and I'm on page 70 of this one. So I probably would have finished this one by now if I just focused on that, but whatever. This one's kind of friends to lovers. It's in the same like town as this one, but I don't think there's any crossover at all. So you can read whatever you want, whatever order. Basically just this these friends who the guy has been gone for like four years after a awkward situation happened between him and her um, and now he's back in town for Christmas and I think they're about to do a road trip or something so yeah that's pretty simple I think it's only like 170 pages so I'll probably try and just finish it tonight and I'll check back in with y'all when that happens I guess <laughs> all right we have finally finished one book at five hours and 16 minutes, we finished the Kindle one, Coco Kisses. Honestly, so this book is weird. <laughs> and not like the book is weird, like my experience reading the book is weird. Because in the beginning, I was like, ooh, three, maybe four stars even. And then they get to the cabin, which you think would make me love it even more because you know forced proximity the one bed trope even though i don't care about the one bed trope all that stuff i but the cabin parts is when i started to be like oh maybe 2.5 stars <laughs> and it wasn't because anything was written necessarily too bad it was just it made me hate girl main character taylor it made me hate her because she was just so stupid <laughs> She was just so stupid and so in denial about everything. Like, I need you to be at least a little Delulu. And not even Delulu. I need you to think logically. Because this man was out here literally, like, saying what he needed to say. And she was like, how could he say that? Like, what does he even mean? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> like, girl, shut up and just kiss him, you dumbass. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. 
And so I literally just started skimming when they finally got together. And then I just read, like, the last two chapters because I wanted to see, like, what about his career did he end up changing or anything like that. So, like, the last chapter I kind of liked. So I was like, mm, maybe three stars again. I think she has this for all of her books on her website. There's, like, the bonus chapter, a free bonus chapter on her website because I know... I have read that for this book. Um, and I don't even care to read it. I don't want to read it. I don't care. I didn't care about them at all towards the end. Like, I I cared about them a lot more in the beginning, which is interesting. It was, like, this whole plot over her, like, twin nephews who are, like, four or five or whatever, um, questioning the existence of Santa. And so, like, they're going out of their way to, like, prove that Santa exists and all this stuff. And personally... Being Indian, half Indian, Indians don't give a damn about Santa, okay? So I just don't understand. I just don't get the the need to, like, prove to your kid that Santa exists. I've never cared or understood the plot. And it's probably just because I grew up not even, like, no one even tried to, like, get me to believe in Santa. <laughs> Like, I remember one time I set cookies out and it wasn't even for Santa. It was just to see if my grandparents would eat the cookies to, like, make me think Santa was real. And they didn't. <laughs> they did not eat those cookies. <laughs> and I was like, yep. I wasn't heartbroken because I didn't believe in him. Nobody, like, it just wasn't taught to me to, like, believe in him or care about him or anything like that. So when a story or a book or an episode of something has that plot of like trying to like preserve the kids childhood by making them still believe in Santa even though they are skeptical I never care about those plots because if they're starting to not believe then just let them I just don't get it I don't understand maybe someone can tell me if you understand, tell me in the comments because I truly just don't understand I'm not saying that they're wrong for wanting to get them to still believe i'm just saying i don't understand neither do i give a damn whoa <laughs> i i didn't think i would go through such a tangent over santa it's it's the way this the first review i see is 2.5 and i feel like she summed it up for me completely and she didn't like the santa thing either <laughs> pause to read if you care pause and zoom in there you go but yeah so i think I think I'll give it a 2.75 if I'm going to be, like, super picky. But I definitely enjoyed Scrooge and the Girls Next Door a lot more last year, at least. We're going to see. We're going to see if maybe things are different. But, yeah. So, that's my review of that. We still have, like, 20 hours left. So, <laughs> see y'all later. Oh, my gosh, guys. It's, like, almost 1 a.m., but I forced myself to stay up because I had like 30 pages left. <laughs> but I did finish Scrooge and the Girls Next Door. The timer's been going for eight hours and 26 minutes now. Would I still give this book a five stars? I don't really know. I'd say I'm leaning more towards like a 4.75, which is just being picky, obviously. But I still really enjoyed it. So this author does do closed door romances in case you're interested in those. I really did enjoy it. It was definitely giving Hallmark vibes, but like good Hallmark, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think because it was Grumpy Sunshine, Single Mom, Neighbors, it has so much, so many elements in it that I really liked. And I just feel like compared to the other book by her that we just read together, <laughs> I feel like th with this one, we like genuinely got to know the characters. I think that is also what was lacking in the other book. And this one is a little bit longer than the other one. So that makes sense. But yeah, honestly... I still had a fun time. There are some critiques I definitely have. The dialogue was sometimes cringy. I'll be for real. I say slang sometimes, like bet, like facts and stuff like that. And that just was weird. Like they were doing it in a joking way. So that's a little bit better instead of serious. But like, I don't know. It just cringed me out a little bit. But I think my favorite part, what makes me like the book so much is the little girl. Evie, she's so cute, so respectful, just such a sweetheart the entire time. 
it's just like I just love her I love her so much yeah I'm still gonna give it five stars I don't care I'm definitely the type that doesn't like when they get together like in the last chapter and then there's an epilogue at the end which this is one of those but like I said with the Coco kisses she has a bonus chapter free on her website so I think that filled the void last year and I think I vaguely remember what happens so yeah I'm down for it whatever so yeah I'm gonna go to bed but this one still is five stars for me I woke up and instantly started reading I started um season skinny which is also on Kindle Unlimited. It is a hockey rom-com. And once I saw that title, I was like, cool, got it. We'll read it. And now come to find out that it has the marriage of convenience trope. If you saw my tier ranking of tropes, you know marriage of convenience is it for me. The timeline is kind of not timelining in a believable way for me, but <laughs> it's it's a Christmas book. It's hallmark e what do I expect, you know? So it's now been 10 hours and 13 minutes of me reading total. I want chicken wings. I finished season scheming last night. I think I'd give it like a solid three stars. Like it's, it's cute. It's definitely cheesy, but like that's what you're expecting with a holiday romance book, right? But I just feel like there was like some of the dialogue like really cringed me out a bit <laughs> and then some events could have been fleshed out a little bit more like I really wanted to see the downfall of her ex like truly I wanted to see the downfall of him <laughs> and we didn't really see that so I would have liked a little epilogue or something of her just being like oh yeah his business shut down and the Elizabeth left him and blah 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 and like stuff like that you know even if it's just like a sentence or two, I would have been totally great with that. Um, so I just feel like there was a lot left to the imagination, which of course it's like under 300 pages. So I'm not expecting so much from it. Overall, it was like a solid three stars. He falls pretty hard, pretty quickly. So we're into that. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a cute, quick and easy rom-com. It was also closed door. I didn't realize that so many holiday romances were closed door. But yeah, and it, I'm not complaining. Like, I don't seek out smut and I don't seek out closed door, you know? Like, I just read and whatever happens, happens. <laughs> did get the A Christmas Carol audiobook just because it was free with my premium of Spotify so I already read and finished that because it only took like less than three hours to listen to and so I would that's like a classic you know I feel weird rating classics so I to give it like a four out four or five stars you know I kind of zone out at some points because of the language you know so now we're at 15 hours and 50 minutes almost 16 hours which is great for me. So now we're reading The Holly Dates. I am very excited for this one. It's Grumpy Sunshine got left at the altar last Christmas. She's going on some dates again for the first time. And he's a grumpy restaurant owner. And he already hates her. <laughs> and Loki, if I was him, I'd kind of be annoyed with her too. Because she, she really was reading a book ran into him, made him drop all of his alcohol that cost like a thousand dollars and then blames him. Like, girl, you're the one that was reading, not paying attention to anything. <laughs> so I'm kind of on his side right now. I'm a little bit on his side, but also I was not prepared. Like I'm literally only on chapter three. Okay. I was not prepared for there to be like serious this happening because every book I've read so far other than a, a Christmas Carol has been just so like, la 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 cheesy like i just got to his backstory like a little snippet of his backstory there's a reason he's grumpy guys there's a reason he's grumpy <laughs> so yeah i'm probably gonna love this one just because there's trauma <laughs> bro i'm not even done i'm 38 percent into this i need you to go read this i need you to go read this right now i was already giggling kicking my feet for this man and i love holly too she's just so holly jolly 
but Kai and his brother, his brother, his little brother is funny. <laughs> but Kai, I love him. And then something just got revealed and now I'm like, I can't do this. Oh my God. I want to buy this now. <laughs> I've mentioned how I don't like owning physical copies of Christmas books in the girls next door. And that's only because that one I gave five stars last year. This one might be one of those. This one might be one of those. It might be too early to say because I'm not even 50% in. But I am shook. That's all I can say really right now. I'm, ooh, 1717. But oh my god. I don't know how I'm going to move on after this one. <laughs> I finished. <laughs> Five stars. Five stars. I might go online and buy this book right now. <laughs> Five stars. And for the black girlies. She does her hair care routine when she's sad. <laughs> I loved it. It was funny. It was serious. It was lovey-dovey. He, he falls hard as frick. It was fake dating for a second. It was, <sighs> there was plot twists. Everything that, there was so much in this. And it's under 300 pages. Under 300 pages. As she gave me all of that. This is what I'm looking for. This is the type of books I'm looking for when you're less than 300 pages. You better bring it. I have been reading now for 20 hours and 16 minutes. So we got four hours left. Thank God. Thank God. As much as I love this book and rereading my Mr. Scrooge one, I'm sick of this challenge. <laughs> I'm sick of it. Okay, so I found a cute short little story. It's about 170 pages. So I think the 170 pages will be like just enough to get to 24 hours and not too long to where I don't finish it in time. So that's good. But the book is Cabin Crush. So I've read quite a bit. I The Kindle says I have like an hour and 20 minutes left. And so far, my thoughts are that it's kind of immature. Not like a bad immature. It's just more so like the characters are 24, 25. And I keep forgetting that. Um, like it, the story itself just oozes teenager. It's not necessarily that they act like teenagers it's just the story itself i don't know if that makes any sense <laughs> but yeah so i have to keep reminding myself that they're like grown <laughs> so there's that i mean they are having like talks about like career crisis and feeling like they need to have it together and how they feel like a failure because they're 24 and haven't figured out their life or whatever like they're having those conversations which i think is relatable in your 20s for sure but other than that like the actual plot the actual romance and everything else it kind of just oozes teenager and that could be because the prologue is them when they are teenagers and so maybe I just can't get out of that headspace, but I feel like it could have worked if they just kept them as teenagers <laughs> instead of doing like a time jump or anything. We have finished the book at 23 hours and 43 minutes. So I think that's good enough. I don't know about y'all, but I am not about to find another Christmas book just to read it for 15 minutes. <laughs> so yeah, um cabin crush let's talk about it i guess the my points from the beginning still stand and actually kind of were confirmed that it wasn't just me the more i read it because what the guy got mad at i like chapter 13 was so like dumb to me like i didn't even think he would get mad over that they kept even like in the dialogue talking about how oh yeah that's like we're not teenagers anymore like oh yeah you're doing this in like you're not a teenager why are you doing that like stuff like that I started saying stuff like that um after the clip i filmed so i feel seen now i feel like that confirmed my initial thoughts of the book it's basically a brother's best friend unrequited love 
and they're all family friends so they like do dinners together birthdays christmas all that stuff they do all that stuff together i guess i would give it like a three stars just because it wasn't bad but it's not really my cup of tea like the unrequited love part of it i'm pretty picky when it comes to that and they tried to make it sound like maybe he didn't like all of a sudden fall for her because he was jealous but that's what it was giving still like they tried to convince me but I still didn't feel that you know like I wasn't convinced of that it definitely gave he started liking her because he got jealous and that's it so yeah I wasn't really rooting for them really hard or anything like I just don't have any feelings towards this book at all pretty much is what it is and that's why i'm just gonna give it like a little three star because it's like whatever it's nothing special <laughs> that one was also closed door the book i read but the holly dates was closed door holly dates did have spice it was open door for those of you that might be wondering but yeah i'm not too mad at this little challenge because i found the holly dates and now i want to read everything britney cherry has so that was successful. I got to reread one of my favorites from last year, Mr. Scrooge and the Girls Next Door. I guess that's the end of this video. I finally did it, guys. I'm so happy that I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> I'm still going to read Christmas books, but not like make it my entire reading experience. Like just back to back. Like I can't do that anymore. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe. Follow me on my socials. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Mm -hmm.